The season kicks off this week for every team, and a lot of big moves were made in the offseason to get ready for the show. These are every team's best offseason move, in order by Team City. Arizona Diamondbacks, Eduardo Rodriguez. Coming off an NL pennant, Arizona had a mid-tier offense and below average pitching. Rodriguez is coming off the best year of his eight-year career, a 3.30 ERA over 26 starts, and he's gonna fit right in the middle of that Arizona rotation. Atlanta Braves, Chris Sale. For a team that doesn't need much help, I like the boldness of this move. It is quite risky, and they got rid of Mike Soroka, who never panned out because of injury. All to get Chris Sale, who hasn't had a good year since 2018. But when Sale is good, he's one of the best. I just wonder if he can put all his injury concerns behind him and return to form. The Braves were only 7th in the National League in pitching, so a good year from Sale can be huge for them. Baltimore Orioles, Corbin Burns. For a young team on the rise, this move solidifies their status as a World Series contender. This guy's been great since 2020, the Cy Young winner of 2021, a bona fide ace at the top of a very good rotation. This is a power move that should scare the rest of the league. Boston Red Sox, Tyler O'Neill. The Sox were bottom five in the AL in pitching, and they did sign Lucas Giolito, but he's out for the season. So I guess their best offseason move was signing Tyler O'Neill. He seems to be regressing over the last two years, but he was MVP caliber in 2021, and maybe at age 29, he can regain that form. He has a lot of upside. Chicago Cubs, Shota Imanaga. The Cubs are close. It seems like they need to hold the team together a little bit longer to make a good run. And over the offseason, they did lose Marcus Stroman. They found a good replacement in Shota Imanaga. We saw him pitch in the WBC, and his numbers in Japan are very good. Assuming he can make that transition to the major leagues, he should pick up where Stroman left off. Chicago White Sox, Mike Soroka. In 2019, he looked like the next big thing. And ever since 2020, he's been an injury mess. The White Sox picked him up, and for a team that's going nowhere this year, they have a guy that could give him a good half season, and then flip him at the deadline for prospects. Cincinnati Reds, Frankie Montas. The Reds were an exciting team last year. Lots of high scoring games, great for the offense, not good for the pitching. They made a bunch of pitching moves over the winter, and I think the best one was getting Frankie Montas. He had some very good years in Oakland, was pretty much injured his whole time in New York, and now he's got a one year deal in Cincinnati hoping to be the ace that gets the Reds to the playoffs. Cleveland Guardians, Scott Barlow. This team was middle of the pack in pitching and bottom four in offense. I would have hoped for a big offensive piece to be added, like last year when they picked up Josh Bell, but no. I guess their best move was getting Scott Barlow. He's a very solid back of the bullpen arm. Great years in 21 and 22. Regressed some last year, but pitched pretty well in San Diego. Assuming he's healthy, he's gonna help that already good bullpen. Colorado Rockies, Cal Quantrill. No surprise, the Rockies had the worst pitching in the National League, and this trade with Cleveland makes them better. Between 2020 and 2022, he had a 308 ERA. Last year was kind of a mess, spiking to 524, but assuming that was a one-off, the Rockies got a good pitcher. Detroit Tigers, Mark Canna. I think they had a great offseason, losing Eduardo Rodriguez but doing a good job replacing him. The offense was bottom three in the league, and Mark Canna gives him a very solid bat. Not the most power, more of a doubles hitter, consistently an above average OPS, and should add some legitimacy to their lineup. Houston Astros, Josh Hader. The Astros had a scary bullpen last year, but with Hector Neris and Phil Maton and Ryan Stanek leaving, they needed some help and they got it. Possibly the best reliever in baseball, Josh Hader will now join Ryan Presley and lock down every close game. This was a big time need for them, and they addressed it in the best way possible. Kansas City Royals, Michael Waka. Some people think the Royals are gonna do something this year. They got Hunter Renfro to help the offense. They got Will Smith, who always ends up with a World Series ring. But Michael Waka is a really solid starting arm. He's coming off two very good seasons, really resurging his career. And if the Royals do anything this year, he's gonna have to be just as good as he has been. Los Angeles Angels, Adam Simber. This was really not a good offseason for the Angels. They need a lot of help all around, but didn't do anything that should give their fans hope. Adam Simber will help their bullpen, He's been good since he broke in back in 2018, and he's been especially good since he joined the Blue Jays. Good pickup, but not what the Angels need to be relevant. Los Angeles Dodgers, Yoshinobu Yamamoto. You might say Otani, but without him being able to pitch this year, and starting pitching being the Dodgers' biggest problem, Yamamoto is the guy. I know he got rocked in his first start, but look at his numbers in Japan. The guy is absolutely an ace, and he should be there when the Dodgers need him the most in the playoffs. Miami Marlins, Tim Anderson. Despite making the playoffs, the offense was last place in the National League last year. They didn't improve much there, one of the reasons I have them in last place, but they did get Tim Anderson. 
Ignore last year. The guy can flat out hit. He was over 300 the last four years before 2023. Won the batting title in 2019. He can give them a nice bat at the top of their order alongside Luis Arise. Milwaukee Brewers, Brandon Woodruff. They already lost Corbin Burns. They couldn't lose another ace. Woodruff was able to re-sign a two-year deal. And even though he only pitched in 11 games last year, he was very good. And before that, he's been a stud and he's been healthy most of the time. Minnesota Twins, Anthony Disclefani. They lost Sonny Gray and that hurt. He was second for the Cy Young last year, and it looks like the best they could do to replace him was this guy right here, Anthony DiSclefani. The last two years haven't been great, but he's known to break out and have a good year. New York Mets, JD Martinez. They were in the bottom half of pitching and offense, and they've made a bunch of moves trying to improve both. One of their last moves I think is the best. JD Martinez had a great year with the Dodgers, and I think he still has a lot left. He's a dangerous bat, and he's going to pair well with Pete Alonso. New York Yankees, Juan Soto. This was easy. Aside from Aaron Judge, that Yankees offense didn't have a lot of bite. Judge was out for about a third of last year, and the Yankees were bottom five in offense. Soto gives them another big threat, someone to protect Judge or vice versa. It was a big trade and a great move. Oakland A's, Alex Wood. They didn't do much, but Alex Wood is going to bring in 11 years of experience, a career 374 ERA. He's their opening day starter. Not great, but this team isn't in the business of signing anyone to win right now. Philadelphia Phillies, Aaron Nola. Their window is wide open. They have all their pieces in place, and over the offseason, it looked like they might lose one of their aces, Aaron Nola. They were able to get him back, sign Zach Wheeler to an extension, so the Phillies are set up again to make the playoffs and make another deep run. Pittsburgh Pirates, Michael A. Taylor. This was a bottom three offense, and they're a team that has some hope this year. Michael A. Taylor has a mix of power and speed. He's only been an above average hitter once in his career, but he can be a threat and help the Pirates offense. San Diego Padres, Dylan Cease. They lost a ton over the offseason. Soto, Hayter, Snell, and their starting staff had a big hole in it. Then they trade for Dylan Cease, and suddenly their rotation looks like it can hold water. Cease is great at his best, average at worst, so it seems like he could only help. San Francisco Giants, Jorge Soler. I know, they got Robbie Ray and Blake Snell and Jordan Hicks. Those guys are joining an already good pitching staff. This offense was second to last in the National League, so I think their best move was getting Jorge Soler. He's coming off an all-star season, 36 homers, 853 OPS, and he's trying to become the Giants' first 30 home run hitter since 2004. Seattle Mariners, Mitch Hanniger. He left the Mariners for one year, signed with the Giants, only played 61 games, wasn't good when he was in, and he got traded back to the Mariners. That's where he became a star, getting MVP votes in 2018 and 2021. So maybe, now that he's back home, he can regain form and help an offense that really needs it. St. Louis Cardinals, Sonny Gray. The Cardinals pitching was fourth worst in the league in 2023, and they tried to sign some new guys to help. The only name that seemed like it was a good move was Sonny Gray. Like I said before, number two in Cy Young voting last year. Still, only 34 years old, landing a three-year deal. He had two great years in Minnesota, so why wouldn't he carry that on to St. Louis? Tampa Bay Rays, Ryan Pepio. Trading away Tyler Glass now hurts. I know, he was hurt all the time, but the guy was a stud. Ryan Pepio could be their next Glass now. Only 26 years old, very limited time in the majors. But last year in 42 innings, he had a 214 ERA. The Dodgers wanted the established big leaguer. The Rays are taking their chance on the young gun, and I think it's a good bet. Shohei says he's all in. Texas Rangers, Tyler Malley. He barely saw the mound in Minnesota. A 3.64 ERA and nine starts over two seasons. But before that in Cincinnati, he had a good run. He was durable and kept his ERA under four and a half. The Rangers didn't do a whole lot. As of this video, Jordan Montgomery hasn't signed yet. They need rotation help. Michael Lorenzen was a decent signing, but I think Malley is better. Toronto Blue Jays, Justin Turner. I didn't have a lot of great options. It was either the 39-year-old Turner or the 40-year-old Joey Votto. They had the AL second best pitching last year, but their offense was mid-tier. Turner is old, but last year he hit 23 bombs, drove in 96, and had an 800 OPS. The guy can still play and help the offense. Washington Nationals, Eddie Rosario. Kind of like the Pirates, this team seems to have hope, but it was hard to find a big impact addition. They were bottom four in offense and pitching, so anything would be helpful. And of all the guys they brought in, Nick Senzel, Juan Yepes, Joey Gallo, Jesse Winker, Zach Davies, Derek Law, Matt Barnes, I think the best one is Eddie Rosario. He has a lot of upside. 
He was a clutch hitter last year. He could be really good for the Nats. That's all I have for now. Let me know what you think of these players and if you would have chosen another player for any team. Before you go, please drop a like. And if you're new here and want to see more content like this, please give me a sub. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time.